My dear brother and sisters, indeed it is a great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we, he has brought her here today and inshallah another two more days that we will be spending together listening to our speakers and scholars and benefiting with our, from our interactions with one another and getting to know one another. And inshallah, this should motivate us. So when we go back, when we return to our communities, our masajid, our homes and our families, we go with, we live with this desire that inshallah we will make a difference in our communities and our towns and our villages and our neighborhoods. And that difference is going to be to bring humanity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will help one another and cooperate in acts of kindness and righteousness and we will inshallah work towards a better America. So today our topic which addresses this issue or crisis that we see that the election of last year has brought. And people are asking this question. It is not just Muslims asking this question. It is people from different backgrounds, different colors, different faiths, people of conscience, people who love America, people who see that the administration is taking this country to a disastrous course. People are asking this question, what happened? How did we end up to what we are seeing in this country now? It was a few months ago that there was a program and the president of Union Theology in New York, she made a comment and she said that she the rhetoric or the speeches or the tweets of the president is not that that is bothering her. But what is bothering her is the people who are coming to his programs and his processions and his gatherings and praising him and agreeing with him. And I also remember sitting in one of the interfaith gatherings and there was an 80-year-old Jewish woman who was sitting and she had tears in her eyes when she said, I don't know what happened to my America. And she said that it was 50 years ago when she marched with Martin Luther King in DC when he made the famous speech of I have a dream. And she said, what happened? We thought now everybody will have a civil rights. Now that we have changed a better course for this country. And with those tears in her eyes, she was saying, we have to come back and work again. We have to stand up for what is right and what is just. My brother and sister, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, Ya ayyul ladheena amanu, wa koolu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum, wa yakfir lakum dhunubakum. وَمَنْ يُطِعَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking the believers to stand up for what is right. To say what is right. This is our responsibility, our duty as believers to say and stand for what is truth and what is straightforward and what is haq. As American Muslims, it is our duty and our responsibility to play this role as servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is my first reminder to all of us. We call ourselves Ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call ourselves followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the, the Ibad of Allah and the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do not sit quietly 
and see if there is oppression happening. They do not sit quietly and see that if there are communities of color, if there are communities who are not being given their rights properly, and they just sit and watch. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands from us action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us all the billahi min shaitan rajim. Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusin. It is our own desire, it is our own activism that will make a change, my brother and sister. So if we are wondering what happened in America, yes, it has happened in America. But what are we going to do now? And that was the lesson that I first learned about five years ago when I was stopped at the airport after I was coming from one of my overseas trips. And it was, it had been happening quite a bit with me. And I think some of you probably can, can think about your own experiences. But when this custom officer and immigration officer was, you know, going through my stuff and, and I told him that, look, the questions that you're asking me, you already know these answers. You know I am with Islamic Circle of North America. You know I live in Virginia. You know all of this. And then he looked at me and he said, sir, if you don't like it, I'm just doing my work. This is my job. If you don't like what is happening to you, change your congressman. That was the lesson, that these people are doing their job. But it is where, where policies, where bills are passed and policies are made. The people who we give our vote and they go and sit and make these policies. This is what we, my brothers and sisters, must engage and get involved in. This is what activism is like. This is what democracy is. Democracy is not just sitting quietly and waiting for things to happen. It is not about someone else will go and vote, but and everything will be all right. It doesn't happen like that. So my brothers and sisters, when it, com when it comes to what now, what should we do now, it comes with leaving our living rooms and coming and knocking on the doors of these politicians. It comes to reaching out to other communities, communities that are being oppressed, NAACP, communities, Latino organizations, making these bridges, building these bridges with them. That what ta'awunu al birri wa taqwa that our cooperation is for good, for righteousness, that we will work together to make America good for each and every person of, and citizen of this country, each and every person that is living in this country. We are not going to help the administration build walls, but we will stand with those oppressed people and will fight for their rights. If there are students DACA students who, have, who are struggling to get their right as American citizen, we should work with those organizations so that these kids can get their right. And this has become a little personal when a few days ago my daughter told me that she didn't know but two students at George Mason in her class were literally worried that maybe tomorrow or a week after, they will be sent back and they don't know where they belong to. This is a reality, my brothers and sisters. And when there are over 11 million undocumented immigrants who are called, you know, who do not have any documentations, we must fight for those people. They may be poor people but they are human beings, 
and they deserve the right to live a dignified life. They are human beings. They are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not their fault that they were born in some country or some place where there was par poverty or oppression. My brothers, this is what we must start to build these relationships and bridges. And these communities, these, these, these fields of activism are not just only in Washington, D.C. It is not only in New York or Chicago, but it is in South Carolina, it is in Alabama, it is in Iowa and Ohio and all these places, wherever our communities are. So we must work and engage and participate in these actions. We must also edu educate ourselves that when we see that there is a segment of our, our country, there is a population in our country that is failing to understand the changing of colors in America. So how do we act? How do we engage? And how do we understand how to reach out to these communities and find ways to engage and build relationships? My brothers and sisters, We must not see this activism in the picture of last year elections. This is not about that. Yes, it was historic. People were not looking for results like that. But our political and civic engagement, we must not bind it with one episode that happened a few months ago in America. We must not just connect it with, because it happened November of 2017, so we will, no. This activism, this engagement, this civil rights struggle is a continuous process. It must not be only seen from that perspective and that angle. This struggle is a continuous struggle. Yes, today it may be that we are feeling the pressure, that we are feeling that it is all coming to us, that the president is signing bills after bills, stopping immigration and this and that. But our engagement in civil rights struggle must be for a long-term plan. It is not only that now it is the time. Now is the time to wake up and become active. But be, be in this for a long journey. Engage and participate. Not only that 2018 is the only time that I'm going to participate but no, every two years there are elections. Every two years we go and we vote. Every four years we elect a president. So for us, many of you are very young. You have a long way to go, inshallah. So activism, civil rights struggle, participation in these actions is a must for all of us. In 1992, when America saw for the first time, which some people will say that it was the first Me Too movement, when it was during Anita Hill hearings in 1992, that immediately after that, when American women saw that there was something unfair and unjust, so the elections that happened immediately after that, 24 women were elected for the first time in Congress. They saw that now is the time to act. So it was 24 women were elected for the first time in Congress. And I was just recently looking, a few months ago, there was a report, and I believe there, the, the news was in Huffington Post, that almost 19,000 women 
are currently seeking to participate in elections in America. And I just checked the numbers that Emily, Emily's list, which, which collects this data, according to them, as of December of 2017, almost 25,000 women in America were seeking information to run for different kinds of elections. This is what, when you see something is not right, you don't sit, you don't wait for someone else to come and make a change, you stand up and you say, I will make that change. So, as Muslim Americans, I know there are, in different counties, in different communities, in different states, alhamdulillah, there are Muslims who are looking to participate in these elections, to run for offices at different levels, state, school boards, county, townships, Congress, but this is not just only, it is just a beginning. And I encourage all of us, if you are citizens, you must be a registered voter. If you are not a registered voter, that is your first assignment, that when you go back, you get yourself voter registration. And the second thing is, participating in elections. It is not just enough to, now that I am a registered voter, I am good, but on election day, go and cast your vote. Make a difference. Encourage others. Make sure that your friends and your family members are registered voters. And just remind them, call them, you know, go and vote, participate, give your vote. And this is what we must all, inshallah ta'ala, do. And lastly, an area where some of us, I, um, I will admit, I didn't pay much attention to this area before. But alhamdulillah, some of our masajid in Northern Virginia, Darun Nur, Dar Hijra, Adams, Mustafa Center, and a few other communities, we started to come together because now we have a secretary of education in the state of Virginia is a Muslim. This is a historic achievement. So now we are getting, now we are opening up some, we are seeing that there are some new opportunities here, which is that in the state of Virginia, there are close to 1,000 open seats to serve in different commissions and boards. Over 1,000 seats that are open. All it, you have to do, if, brothers and sisters who are here from the state of Virginia, especially for you, all you have to do is, we have a postcard for you, which will tell you what to do. And no matter what field, what, whatever your profession is, you are a citizen, and you, you are a citizen, and you live in the state of Virginia, you can serve on these commissions and boards. All you have to do is apply, and the organization that we formed, Virginia Muslims Advancement Commission, we will, inshallah, help you to we'll give our letters of endorsement and help you in making sure that your application reaches there. And then, you know, I'm sure opportunities will come for us. With me today is Adnan, Brother Adnan Bukhari, Brother Jalal, and Brother Saif is going to come and speak a little now after me. But you can reach them, ask them any questions that you have, how to serve on these commissions and boards, and inshallah they will help you and direct you. And again, as I said, pick up this card. We will be placing it different places. Now, brothers and sisters from different states, other states, go and find these opportunities. Reach out to your local delegates or senators and ask them, tell us about these commissions and boards. Let us serve. Let us serve so that people can see us, 
that Muslims, Ameri Muslim Americans are playing a role in the society and they are not only just worried about Muslim issues, they are worried about issues that are affecting all Americans and the society. Jazakallah khair, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and your families and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us, our iman and give us tawfiq to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our first.